Okay. Um, just need a motion to approve our agenda. So moved. Is there a second? Second. All in favor, say aye. Oh, sorry. All vote. Oh, is everyone uh, signed into the meeting? Let me check. I know I'm just seeing Ed. I'm, I'm in. I, I'm in all the papers. So am I. Did you Can go I? In, in civic clerk, did you uh, select that you're present at voting? You know, I don't think oh, you did. Oh, yeah, I don't yes. think I did that, yeah. <laughs> Where is that at? Under the meeting? Yeah. No, mine goes right to the special meeting. It doesn't, like, I, I don't have, for the last meeting, it has the green box that says there, leave so. meeting. Yeah, I don't. I don't. Hmm. Okay. But this one doesn't have, and if I press on it, I That's it goes right started. to there. That's where mine did, too. Let me and I'm up there. My name is in there. Okay. Yeah, mine too. Let me manually get everybody logged in. Yours too? Okay. I can't, yeah. So, Dean's writing out your name's there? Yes. Yeah. He's going to log us all in, apparently. So the motion to approve the agenda was made by Melissa and seconded by Ed? Yep. Yes. Okay, uh, first item on the agenda is uh, uh, Ray Schiller. So, um, obviously, Ray is not here, so your name for the record, please. Jennifer Wagner with Oshkosh Family. Okay. And you are? The appointed temporary guardian. Okay, great, thank you. Yep. Okay, so it's our understanding then he is looking then to be moved to. Um, let's get it up here. So fourth, because my mine's not coming up here. Yeah, you know what? I've got blank pages also. <laughs> oh, here it goes. Yep, four thirty South Clay. Four thirty South Clay Street. Okay. So, um, and that is a nursing home, correct? I believe so. I just got him on Thursday, so I don't know much about him at all. Okay. Do, do you know if, if he um, uh, is both mentally and physically incapacitated? Um, Laura sent me notes. They said that they believe he most likely has dementia and is pretty much progressing pretty fast um, and he is still a two-on-two -two assist with them with a follow -up what does that time. mean um, two staff members assist him with cares walking getting up okay pretty much so basically okay. without them he would we'd be basically be bedridden is that correct correct okay so in terms of the, the facility uh, what, what precautions are there in the facility in terms of him being able to get out, or is it all locked doors, both internally and externally, do you know? I have no clue. You have no clue? No, I never even heard of this facility before. Okay. And right now he's at Aurora, and they just they want to move him to this location. Correct. From my understanding, they called like 55 different nursing homes and nobody would accept them because of being a sex offender. And they got in contact with this one and they 
accepted them. It's just a matter of getting it passed. Do you know how long he's expected to stay there? I do not know. Sorry, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know nothing. I, don't know that I got him and they told me I had to come to this meeting today. <laughs> so. Go ahead. I was thinking that we should call the Santa Maria Nursing Home. That was my, that was my thought that was kind of running through my head, just in terms of asking what the facility is like, what they expect from this individual, how they're going to monitor him. Hopefully they have more information. Okay. Um, I have my cell phone, so I can use to call us. Oh, yeah. yeah. And we've got a speaker phone over here. I don't know if it is there a phone up there at all? Mm -mm. No. Okay. Do you have the phone number for me? I have, yeah, it's four, It's 920-432-5231. What will your dialing, would it help you to give, take five, ten minutes just to review the file? They didn't really, I don't have much. It's just from the notes from Aurora. Otherwise, the courts don't give me anything. This is all of Roar's notes on his medical. Okay. Like, I don't even know what his sex crime is. So. Is that typical that they won't give you all that information? Yeah. Yes. And they want you to be the guardian without having all the information? Correct. That's when we have to do our research. We meet with the client, but I only had a day. Right, of course. So. Okay. Okay. What was the phone number again? 920 432 5231. And I would ask for the admitting administrator, probably. How are, how are they going to hear you guys? That's why I was going to say, I can use my cell phone, I can put it on speaker. Okay. If, I mean, if you prefer that. Okay. At least we can ask questions. I think that's probably the best way to go. There isn't a hookup here, is there? Let me see plug -ins. No, I don't see one. We could probably put the phone up. Yeah, I mean, I could get the phone up to the bench here. Let's, let's see. Uh, that's past two. That's fine. Hey, let me just put it on my cell phone. It's, okay. it's, it's not a big deal. Terry, this is uh, Dean uh, Gerondale, and I'm actually with uh, the Green Bay uh, Sex Offender Registry Board. And we. Ah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> thank you. You want to talk to Mary, don't you? I, well, it's in regards to Mr. Schiller? Yes. Yes, if I could, if that's the person? Sure. Okay, hang on. <laughs> Sounds like you were expected. <laughs> Hi, Mary. This is uh, Dean uh, Gerondale with the Green Bay Sexual Offenders Residency Board. Yeah. And we're just uh, going over uh, Mr. Schiller's uh, application to move to uh, your facility. We just got a, a few questions for you, if that's all right. Sure. Um, so in regards to your facility, um, we've read the, the information on his, his current uh, status in terms of his mobility. Um, but what other things do you have at your facility to make sure that he's that he can't, you know, get out of his room or, or get out out of the out of the facility. If you have like indoor locks as we well as ultra locks, our doors are secured. Okay. On, on the floor, and yeah, he he'd be on third floor. Okay. And we have a full staff twenty four seven. Okay. How many people are on staff on each floor? Each floor. Well, it all depends on um, on day shift. There's two CNAs plus a nurse and on that floor. And uh, at, during and the nighttime? The Excuse me? During the night? 
in the night there is a one nurse for two floors, but then there's a CNA, one CNA on each floor. And how many patients are they responsible for at night? Um, for the night, we only have 24 residents here. In total? Okay. In total. And so at night, so on, that, on, the, on the, the CNA, how many people is she looking at on that one floor at night? At night? Yeah. Um, there's 15 on one floor and 9 on another, but it would be 15 people on that floor. Okay. Okay. And what is your policy or procedure or what your protocol regarding um, patients who um, attempt to leave the facility? What um, is the CNA supposed to do? Oh, well, notify us right away. We'll get the, get the residents. Um, but we call the um, police department. We don't waste any time once you do a full check around the building. Then we call the, um, the police department. And um, but we continue looking for them if they get that far. But we do a bed check right away as soon as somebody knows that somebody might be missing. But I don't think he's able to try at all. Okay. Okay, it says that, it, that he can only basically do like an eight foot shuffle is what it says here. Oh so. yeah, in, in his bag. And how long, do you know, do you know how long he's expected to be there or do you have no clue at this particular time? I have no, no idea, no. Okay. All right, uh, does you both have any more questions for her? I do. Go ahead. Are children allowed to visit um, any patients on that third floor where he will be staying? Um, yeah. There would be. There would be. Okay, and so their children will be allowed to visit on that floor. What, um, and how many, do you have any devices that will alert staff if Mr. Schiller, Schiller should either leave his room or leave the floor? Alarms. We would have an alarm on, oh, an alarm on him. Then the alarm would go off at the main desk and then we would know. Okay. What kind of alarm? Like a bed alarm or a chair alarm, whatever he, he would be hooked up to. Okay. Okay. Because it rings at the, it would ring down at the, the nurse station, which is the hall is not that far from his room. And so with, to the nurse station. And with regard to your belief that Mr. Schiller is not ambulatory beyond approximately eight feet, how was that determined? Well, that was actually not by them. That was actually within the therapy. The therapy yeah. in the therapy hospital. Would determine that. Yeah. Okay. So, was he at all interviewed by um, someone from your facility? He did. Uh, one of our, our nurses went to interview him and talk to him, and we felt we could handle him mainly because we do have another gentleman here that was um, on the sex offender list. Okay, and based on I, I have, I'm sorry, but I have to say that if if your policy with him is you he can't you know no children can we have children come into the building to sing and stuff too. Um, if you think he, he's a threat and we would have to notify all of them, then we would not take them. Right. Well, we're just well, we're, I think you know we don't know that yet, but we just wanted to know what what uh, oh, okay. you know security procedures you have in place. Yeah, we would, yeah. We'd have to keep an eye on them and everything. It's just that um, the children aren't allowed in our facility. Okay. So if you feel that he's, he wouldn't... We can't give you that information. Family, then we would not take them. We can't give you any recommendations. I, I'm just trying to find out what your policies and procedures are. Okay, okay. okay. Well, because when I ca called initially, <coughs> um, they said that it was up to the Green Bay Police Department to determine that if I've been with the neighbors, because there is a school in the area, or whatnot, and they said that's what this hearing was for. Um, so that's why we, you know, went along with the hearing, of course, we thought you were going to tell us something. Okay, do, do you want to tell him? Uh, well, sure, I mean, ultimately, if, if we allow him to, to stay there, then you'd get a letter from us that indicating as such. That you know that he can stay at that facility. If not, then we would okay. send you. We would send you a denial, which means then you couldn't you couldn't house him there. Correct. Okay, that'd be good. That'd okay. be that'd be fine with us. And based upon your understanding or the interview by the nurse who went uh, from your facility that interviewed him, did she? Did anybody give an estimate or expected length of stay? 
No. No. Is your facility, in, in terms of, you know, because he's been, a, you know, he's got a court, a court appointed uh, person, and apparently he's got dementia. Is is the facility set up for people with patients with dementia at this point? Oh yeah. Oh okay. yeah. Most of our residents have dementia. Okay. Okay. So this could be this could be a long time in terms of this location, basically based upon. Could be. Yeah. Yes. All right. Is he there for re rehabilitation or because of the dementia? Um, I think both. Both. Because he was falling. Okay. I understood he was falling. He was a fall risk. Okay. And um, that's why well, we were putting him closer to the nurse's station. But um, that was what started it. And, um, and then, of course, it got into all his other things. So. Okay. All right, anything else? Anybody? No. Yeah. All right, well, thank you so much for your time. We appreciate it. Sure, no problem. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Okay. So it sounds like to me this facility is set up for people with dementia. Um, sounds like they're going to have a device on him that if he tries to leave his room or his bed that an alarm will go off. Um, is that everybody's understanding? Yes, that's mine. However, it is also my understanding based upon what, the, um, um, what she's told us, they do not have a policy um, in place regarding sex, offend, um, sex offenders and children visiting the facility. Yeah, I would, I would agree that they, it's, it sounds, first of all, it sounds like they have another sexual offender there. Mm -hmm. and, and, but you're right, it doesn't sound like if a group comes over to sing for them or something like that, they don't have a policy that those people have to stay in their rooms or, or anything to that effect. True, another thing that I, I find concerning is that in, regardless if there is a group of children who come to visit and use up for singing or what have you and usually they have an adult supervisor with them mm -hmm. if there are patients who have grandchildren great-grandchildren who visit and who are young enough and wander through the halls there's nothing guaranteeing that people know that the children shouldn't should not do that or enter into his room because that is one thing having visited nursing homes like that, when children visit, people... They're running around. They're running around. Yep, I agree with you on that. You know, I, I, I guess the, my, 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 my thought process here is, you know, how far does our board take responsibility for, for that? That policy, I guess, or not lack of policy. In determination, I guess. What I think is knowing what that whether or not we determine that he should be allowed to enter this facility, the fact that they don't have procedures in place, that is rely. That's something they need to have. That is not our responsibility to make sure there are um, that they have procedures. Mm -hmm. But our our responsibility is to protect the public and the community. The community in, extends to people who visit and reside in that facility. Mm -hmm. So a question I have for you mm -hmm. then. So is it appropriate or can you um, ask for such a policy to be implemented in regards to um, this then that that could be sent to the city that this facility now has a procedure and process in place when children enter the facility that his door is shut or what other you know precautions mm -hmm. yeah I can for him have the facility when there's children visitors have them put them in his room shut the door well, I, I think what we want is, is some, you know, I, again, I'm speaking for myself. I don't want to speak for anybody else on the board, but I, I think that if we're going to go forward with this, I think, you know, rightfully so, in, in terms of your concern, is, is we probably some want some sort of written policy that they're going to have a procedure or a process in place when children enter that facility. Um, I yeah. mean, I can't do it for the whole facility. I can do a procedure for, for him specifically. Right, specifically, yep. right, that they yep. would do that yep. uh, hey, for him 
so that if, if we would have proven the facility that the board knows that, hey, they have a procedure and process in place for that, right. if children enter that facility for him, yep. this is what they're going to do. Yep. Would that be appropriate? I, I don't. I don't think it's our place at this time to put that, um, th that is something that I think the department or who, uh, um, the body who is appointed, the, uh, the guardianship over. Right, that's what I'm saying. She right. should do that. I'm just saying. I mean, I'm not advising one way or the other. I'm not advising what, um, because this is, um, we're talking about a business. We're talking mm -hmm. about <clears throat> well, it sounded to me like if, if they have, if there's concern, if they're going to have concerns about his, uh, him being a risk, being a hazard, they're not going to accept him. And, and I, I think that you know, I if we were to say that we need you to have this type of a policy, it's going to be moot because they're not going to take him. I don't think, I think it's inappropriate for them to ask us if we have concerns. That is something they should already have in place since they already have a 290 registrant residing there. If they haven't thought about those policies and procedures and protections for their visitors before today's date, they don't see that there's a need, obviously. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Well, because if you read his medical, if you read his medical record, you know, it sounds like he's, besides his dementia, which we have no point of judging at this point, you know, what it is. I can only judge what's written here. In terms of his physical condition, and his physical condition basically says, "Is you know, the guy can't do much because he's going to fall." It doesn't require. Just to be clear, my prior history as a as a prosecutor in California and prosecuting ch sexual abuse cases, mm -hmm. it does not matter whether somebody's ambulatory or not. Yeah. A child can wander into any room especially children under a certain age, and there are children who are more friendly than others, and all that Matt, um, can happen is inappropriate touching over clothing, uh, slipping of a hand underneath clo clothing. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that's going to happen. Right. My concern is that it could happen, especially since they do not have any policies or procedures in, uh, in place to protect child visitors. Yep. I, you know, I, I just, you know, I'll make the last comment that we can ask for a bonus if anybody else wants to speak. To me, this is, this is much like when we ask um, uh, another sexual offender saying, hey, you got to continue your classes, you need to come back and you need to do this to make sure that we believe that ultimately you're, you're safe to the public. In this particular case, because this individual is not mentally competent asking for them to have a written procedure in regards to him seems no different than what we would ask another sexual offender to do in terms of being able to prove that they're you know not at risk i don't think we can say that we don't have the paperwork that specifically determines why um a guardian or uh, was was uh, necessary was it his physical mental we don't even know what he did we don't even know child enticement. Child enticement, buried within the context, they were ch young children. Right. And Did I you see that? I, I didn't read that. Yeah, I was having a time. I saw something going back to 1980. I saw a date, but I. Or maybe it was other. I, I'm, I'm not sure. But regardless, what matters is we're looking at children. Say we don't know what age. We have to protect public, the public, and that includes children who go to that facility. My view, and it's my personal view, every, obviously anybody can vote any way they deem appropriate. Um, my vote is not necessary. My concern is that there's no uh, system in place or pol to protect any child. I would just chime in since there was some concern raised whether it was the guardianship was due to physical or mental um, limitations. Guardianships in Wisconsin are, are granted based on a finding of incompetence. So it's based okay. on the dementia, it's based on <coughs> the mental concerns. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Any, any other comments the Bells has? 
Okay, I'm gonna, you know, I'm I'm gonna make a motion in regards to Mr. Schiller. Um, I'm gonna make a motion to approve Mr. Schiller moving to 4:30. Um, South, South Clay. Clay Street, pending um, a written procedure uh, by the facility in regards to when children enter that facility, that he will be segregated and and uh, not be allowed to move from a particular location. If they don't want to do that, then my opinion is is then if they don't do it, then he's not eligible to move there. Um, it, just a point of Go ahead. concern with the language used. If you're to approve pending, that means they can move him today if, necess if that's what they choose to do. No, it, it, they'd have to have the written procedure to us prior to it to him moving. That. Okay, so then that that then that's not approval, not approving his moving, unless or until they provide us with the um, policies, written policies and pr uh, procedures. So, okay, I guess for clarification, um, I'd approve Mr. Schiller to live at 400 uh, East Irving. No, South Clay. South Clay, South Clay. Um, at the point in which we receive a written procedure from the facility indicating how he will be segregated and have controls in place to assure no children he will have any interaction with children. Can I just ask how soon did you think he was going to move? From my understanding the hospital would like him out ASAP but if we need to do the procedure I can get that and then get it to you guys. And then it just co goes to you, and then that's. Yep. So that's that's the motion. So just just to make sure, I understand the, the wording of the motion um, for the minutes. The it's a motion to approve uh, upon receipt of the the written procedure by the nursing home segregating um, Mr. Schiller when children are present in the in the facility or on his floor or how. What, what's your in the facility. All right, is there a second? I'll second. I'm sending it for a vote. Did it not pop up on the tablets? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I see that. Um, Ed, Ed was able to vote. I, I can I can do voice votes. Okay. Um, Dean, how do you vote on the motion? Aye. Melissa? No. Renee? Aye. Uh, motion fails on a two to two vote. I voted no. Just oh, <laughs> okay. All right. Um, does anybody else want to make any other motion? I broke. I uh, move. Uh, that we deny Mr. Schiller's application to move to the Clay Street Nursing Home. Is there a second? Second that. All right, I just sent it for the vote. Uh, Dean, how do you vote on the motion? Oppose. Ed? Yes. Melissa? Yes. Right. Opposed. Motion fails two to two. Okay. Uh, based upon the fact that uh, we can move to discussion, is there anything that would change anyone's opinion in regards to this? Or is any other? I, I have a problem with Approving with the idea that you know we're we're going to get something, but not seeing that. If I saw something in front of me right now that says yes, indeed, this is our procedure. 
uh, when children are, are on the floor, when they're in the facility, um, any registered sex offenders will be specifically, you know, isolated, what have you. If I knew that that was in place, then I'd feel comfortable voting to, to approve. But, but you want to read it first? I'd want to read it first, yeah. Okay. I mean, you know, what's the vehicle, what, what's the mechanism for, you know, if that first motion had gone through, what's the mechanism for that to come back here? Um, it might be totally you know, they could say, okay, yeah, we've got a procedure and, and it's, but, you know, Do we, we haven't seen Could you it. call Aunt Mary back and ask her what she does for the sex offender they have now? I will not be happy with that. I need to see a written, first of all, but they're a business and you have to accept that they're going to, no, their don't. liability. No, I well, don't. Then, no, I guess you don't. I need to see something in writing. I need to know that this is part of their policies and procedures because if they are the only facility in, say, a hundred mile radius that is going to accept sex offenders, this is something that they should have already had in place. If they didn't think about it, I but we don't know what they have in place. We didn't really ask. She said they have another one. She didn't really say. No, no, no she, she, did. she did. She said we don't have a procedure in place. She said oh, that. that. Yep, she said that. Which is problematic. I mean, they, they do have a duty to care, a duty, a duty to, you know, it, that's. And it's something that any reasonable person who is a management or administrator of a nursing home should have thought of or, you know, I can't worry about their civil liability, their damages. What I can worry about, I do have the um, duty to worry about is any people within the city's limits, any children who go to that facility. Okay. So, I mean, this is where we're going to end up, okay? So, you know, I'm going to make another motion, okay, in regards to this, but the, the motion's going to ultimately be that, you know, that, that procedure is going to have to be reviewed and approved by this board prior to him having to be able to move there, okay? We call a special meeting for this. I'm not calling another special meeting for it. Um, to review that document. Mm -hmm. So, you know, this will have to come in front of the board at our next scheduled meeting to review that document and then based upon, you know, approval of that document by the board, they'll either say yes or no in terms of a final option for this individual. So although Aurora wants to wants to move them, they, they're not gonna be able to move them <laughs> till that. So um, at least from the standpoint, because right now both motions failed right. and no one's willing to move so, and I, I'm not opposed to what you're saying. I think that's probably the right thing to do. You know, so I, I think that, you know, based upon this motion I make and approval of that, then, you know, they, you'd have to go to them, hey, we need a, a written procedure. It's gotta come back to this, come back to the board. And then at our next scheduled meeting, we'll vote on that procedure if it's adequate mm -hmm. for him to, to, to enter that facility. Okay. So, um, so rather than I think uh, I'm asking you, the motion I'm going to make is is for uh, to have a document drafted by the facility um, that would be brought to this board, and then we would vote on. Would, would, would the motion just be to hold open? Hold it open, yeah. So it's until we get a written procedure that we can okay. look at. Could so I, could I ask a question? Could we just? have it be denied and then they reapply next month with the paperwork. This well, would be like denying not having all the paperwork we need. I mean, the, the motion could be either way. The motion could be to hold the matter open to the next meeting, or it could be deny and reapply. I mean, either motion could be made. Quite honestly, because the facility is not making the, um, the application, it's... Well, it's up to her, ultimately. Right. What yes. I'm getting at is we can't do anything to force the facility to do anything. It is up to them. If they mm -hmm. want to have yeah. Mr. Schiller there, then I my suggestion is deny and request reapplication. Okay, I'm going to make a motion to deny um, Mr. Schiller uh, to move to 430 uh, South Clay Street. Is there a second? Seconded. take the votes uh, verbally. Uh, Dean? Yeah. Ed? Hi. Melissa? Aye. Renee? Nay. 
Okay. The motion passes three to one. Okay, so here's here's what you need to do. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you need to just he's got an application here, and I don't, I don't know if Mary, if you can get that to her because she's the guardian now, the application that was originally submitted, and we just need to have that resubmitted to the city, okay, along with that written okay. policy, sure, and then at the next scheduled meeting, you just got to show up again, and we can put you on the agenda, and, and we'll go from there. Okay, sounds good. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Is there any other business for the board? If not, I'll make a motion to adjourn. Um, oh. Is there a, a motion regarding the next meeting date? Uh, next meeting is Wednesday, August 8th. Seconded. Um, uh, is there anyone who's voting against that? No. No. Okay. I'll mark um, I'll vote in front of And then a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Oh, he did. Okay. He Good. didn't forget.